Ted, yeah, speaking with Tumani, your product, people will not stop buying your product, I guess, no? I'm, I'm thinking because people enjoy and enjoy your product as well. Uh, you mean Century Tuna? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes so oh, but maybe you can tell us a bit more of the, the story of Century Tuna. It's, it's, a, you know, it, it's such a big brand right now, but take us back to the roots when you were starting off, the, when they were starting off to grow the business. How did it come about? Actually, our business started similar to Mr. Barcelon's. No? My father started the business uh, B2B. Uh, it was an export business for tuna. Uh, we're techno our technology partner was uh, from Taiwan. Uh, but uh, we were basically taking uh, the tuna from the Philippines and canning it and exporting it to different countries all over the world. Uh, US, mainly US, Europe, and Japan. Um, so that was the start of the business. But um, as we found out soon enough, um, when it comes to being uh, B2B, a lot of the value uh, that at that time at least we could deliver was really on the pricing lang. So parang pababaan ng presyo palagi. And uh, again, similar to Mrs. Shu, it becomes tiring and you know, it, it's, it, it's a downward spiral all the time. Eh? After you compete, somebody comes, a new comes into the business, drops the price, and then the profitability starts going down. Uh, but so having seen that trend uh, occurring already, we also decided that, uh, my father actually decided that we need to get out of this price strategy price war. Oh. war. So we have to try to brand the business. And uh, so um, fortunately, my dad had some advertising background, and so he put that to good use in uh, trying to promote the product he was selling to everywhere else in the world and trying to introduce it to the Philippines. And fortunately, after a lot of mistakes and a lot of learnings, um, we finally were able to succeed uh, in, in in uh, in uh, introducing tuna to the Philippine diet. Well, when did you when did you start uh, start uh, exporting worldwide? But so the B two B, the business to business so model. So the, the business, uh, our family business, started in 1980. We started producing in 1980, but we only started branding around the late 80s to early 90s. So that, that it was had been century tuna already. Century tuna already at that time. So that would be around 1987 or 86. So uh, several years after the business started, that's when we realized that uh, without being a branded uh, product, we would be um, always competing on price, one or another way. And it's very interesting because right now, I mean, Century Tuna is, is really a, a staple of, of people right now. Well, it's, uh, it's been fortunate that the Philippine uh, consumer has recognized the value of the health benefits of Century Tuna, and uh, I think we're also fortunate. I have to, I mean, have to be uh, thankful to God that uh, we are very fortunate to have been at the right place when the trend began. The, the yes. trend, of course, started with nothing, nothing to do with us, but we were there when it started. So we were able to recognize early on that, hey, there's something going on about people being more conscious about health now than they had been before. So we said, okay, why don't we try to, um, uh, to, to uh, play more into this, uh, into this uh, idea and to emphasize the health benefits more rather than when we started off century tuna we were actually emphasizing mainly the taste aspect and the convenience aspect but when we started noticing that health was uh, becoming more important to consumers globally including the philippines that's when we started putting in uh, the uh, highlighting the health angle of uh, the of so the marketing tuna. started to evolve as well. Correct. After understanding so, the yes. that's why you have all the John Lloyd and all the other models. Yes. Uh, well, you, the, you also have six pack ups down there. Yes. Uh, uh, for, uh, under my shirt, I have eight packs. Eight right? packs. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> and then for for also for a century tuna, when we look at it, how did you also evolve outside of just I mean tuna is tuna, kung baga, di ba? And and how, aside from it being of the health benefits, how did you make it something more essential to the diet? Or how did you vary the diet so that it would fit particularly the Filipino taste? Actually, the, var the variants, the def different recipes of tuna that we have, started out because of the original strategy of uh, promoting tuna based on taste and versatility. Because tuna is kind of like more similar to chicken, tastes like chicken, right? So it, you can, you can add different sauces and taste to it and it will be uh, you know a, a different dish every time uh, so it started out uh, that way but then um, as uh, it turned out to be a strength later on because um, something that is healthy can only also be consumed only you can only repeat something healthy up so many times so we had to the, the fact that we had so many different ways of eating it was became helpful to the strategy of being healthy so you can eat different variants of the product 
uh, over a course of a week and not get tired of the taste. So tuna every day, perfect. Good I, business for you. Every day, yeah. And that's what we would like to see happen in the Philippines, every day. Thanks so much, Ted.